Hi everybody, it's Todd Bishop from GeekWire. I'm here with Jens Beckman from Microsoft, and we are across the street from CES 2017 with a very interesting car here behind us. Jens, tell us what we're looking at here. Yeah, well, we from Microsoft, we partner with five other partners out of, out of the automotive industry, and our goal was to show the engine and mobility solution. So this will show you how a car drives on the public road here, driving in highly automated mode, and we as Microsoft provided our Azure Cloud for all the other partners we will see in the car as well with their features, are building services that will create a value for the customer, for the driver, to really enhance the experience of automated driving in the future. Fantastic. Let's get in the car. Let's see it. Hi. Welcome to our showcase. Where can I bring you? Bring me to the Westgate Hotel. Okay, let's go to Westgate. Estimated time will be five minutes. For this trip, we debit your account with 50 cents per mile for the vehicle usage. The dynamic insurance is as following. Welcome back, Peter. Thanks for choosing our service again. Based on your former rentals, your insurance self-driving score is 92, excellent driver. The car you have chosen has a vehicle safety rating of A. Based on the vehicle diagnostic, the car is in perfect condition and ready to make use of the autonomous driving mode. We have identified passengers. Do you want to purchase passenger liability for this individual trip? Yes, please. Thank you. You, the vehicle and passengers are fully covered for this trip. So following background, um, so what we are thinking here is together with Swiss Re that when we're talking about shared vehicles, um, you have like a unique uh, personal profile for this company. And then when you get in the car, um, the assistant recognizes you, talks about you, about your last driving score and so on and so on. And based on this flexible model, you are able to actually decrease or increase your cost for the insurance based on how you were driving before in the, in the recent, um, recent rentals. And what you see now on the display is our default display. It shows you the current price, it shows you how far we traveled and also how much time elapsed. And uh, based on, on the Swiss Re and Microsoft Cloud solution, this price is calculated dynamically. So based on your current insurance model, but also based on if you're driving in, in highly automated driving mode and manually, the price is decreasing or increasing. To say, of course, highly auto automated driving, so as soon as Lars is pushing the button and we're going in, in automated driving mode, the price will decrease because the assumption is that automated driving is more safe than driving manually. We're using only real and existing data and technologies, no technologies that won't be available in the next 10 years, and that's why we equip this uh, existing car with only onboard sensors that were available already. So I think now it's driving in automated mode. Yes, so my hands are off. <clears throat> my foot is off the pedal. Nevertheless, I'm yeah. still responsible because we are highly automated and not autonomous. And so yeah. in this kind of situation, the car will, of course, decrease afterwards, decrease the speed again. And then what happens as well since the vehicle we is slowing down because of a person on the road. Yes. So what we did is we wanted to show the uh, vehicle to infrastructure communication. So we faked some some few events, for example, pedestrian detection. So there was no pedestrian, but we actually wanted to showcase that in the future when we're talking about automated driving, um, we just want to gain trust from the driver. And that's why potentially assistance could inform the driver about things that happen. So for example, why is the car slowing down now? Because there was a pedestrian and this might have caused uh, any trouble. So the assistant just tells the driver what has, what's happening. And also in the next, uh, for the intersection, it will give a short warning that there is an intersection and that's the reason why the car is slowing down again. Now there's an additional feature coming in a second um, about the productivity. I have found a meeting scheduled for tonight, 8 p.m. with Susan. Do you want to book a restaurant? Show me the best restaurants. Here are the top three restaurants close to your destination. Where do you want to eat? I like the Cosmos. I booked a table at Encore Pizza for two persons at 8 p.m. Enjoy your meal. So basically what we want to show is that <laughs> um, 
that you can be productive in the car because the assistant knows about your calendar, is connected to Office 365, and then sees that there's a meeting without a, ba a, um, a table booked yet. And so the assistant is clever enough to actually uh, propose you to book a table and then a closed restaurant for you. The vehicle is slowing down because of roadworks ahead. Yes, so this is the second V2I message that we have. Assuming that there's some roadworks, actually we faked it a little, there are like two pillars. <laughs> so, but then again, so the assistant just tells you about the driving to just make you feel more, more comfortable about automatic I driving. I see you have passengers in the car. Would you like to purchase an entertainment Wi-Fi package for the journey? Yes, five gigabyte. This will be five dollars. Shall I use your stored payment card? Yes. Service has been enabled. Enjoy. So this is also one feature that provided Cubic Telecom. So they provided the um, whole connectivity of the car. They are multi virtual network operator, but they are also providing entertainment packages to cars, so they are working with different OEMs on that. So for example, they are able to implement a Wi-Fi hotspot in the car, so if you have passengers in the car, children or whatever, you can enable this Wi-Fi hotspot and so um, the people in the back seats can connect with their smartphone or tablet and then stream any, any, um, any service you would like to do. What is the ultimate goal of, of this program? What, what do you hope to show and where do you hope it leads? Yeah, what we want to show is that using cloud services will enable you and our partners in the automotive industry to create services and features that then create a value for their customers and their drivers to actually have a global platform that enables those features you just saw. Is this the kind of thing we could see in the market at some point soon? Well, this is just a showcase, but it pretty much shows um, what ideas Thanks are for choosing our in the service. market right now. Your self-driving score for this trip was rated 90. Your overall score remains 92. Not bad. Compared with other drivers, your behavior is slightly more risky. Please check driver coaching. To answer your question, so basically, all of those services um, are not in a productive state, but we just wanted to show a vision of how we see with our partners how the automotive industry could look like in the future. And since we are all relying here on existing technologies, most of the services can be built by partners or customers already. That's it. Well, thanks for the ride. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> thanks for coming by. <laughs>